Hi, I'm Izzy and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. In today's video, I have a pattern review for you. We are going to talk about the Cashmerette Chilton Trench Coat. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I just finished my Cashmerette Chilton and I think I started it back in August. So it was a little bit of, you know, start, stop, start, stop situation, but uh, I finally finished it right on October 31st. So I thought I would put together a quick pattern review for you. This was definitely, I think, my most challenging project to date. Um, definitely the one that took me the longest and stretched me the most. So let's get started with the pattern review. So first let's talk about the pattern itself. So the pattern is the Chilton Trench Coat by Cashmerette. It is your classic trench coat uh, pattern complete with the flap in the back. They refer to it as the cape in the back the um the pockets buttons waist um waist tie or belt full with the belt loops it's got the ties at the sleeves it's got a vent in the back the pattern has two views so one version ends about mid thigh and one at the knee and i've got notes here so that's why i'm looking down i just don't want to forget anything the pattern is available in sizes 12 to 32, so not the full cashmere size range, but um, all of their upper sizes, basically. It's got epaulettes, a lot of top stitching, like a lot of top stitching. It is fully lined. Um, and obviously has the collar. So yeah, just your classic trench coat. In terms of fabric requirements, so they recommend using mid to heavyweight wovens, such as twill or waterproof raincoat fabric, which would have been really cool actually. Um, you can use wool, but if you're using a wool, use a midweight instead of a heavier weight for the lining so light to mid weight lining just your regular um lining and interfacing uh you need um 12 buttons uh shoulder pads yes there are shoulder pads my first time ever installing shoulder pads um and bias tape uh, for finishing the back facing if you want to. I didn't use um, bias tape for that. In terms of the fabric requirements, so, um, so in 55 inch wide fabric, you're going to need about four to four and a half yards of your main fabric and then three to three and a half for the lining. <clears throat> and that's basically all you need. So you need your main fabric, your lining, some interfacing, 12 buttons, shoulder pads, and then a hand sewing needle because there's quite a bit of um, hand stitching just to finish the um, lining and the vent at the bottom of the back. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now the instructions. So Cashmeret instructions are typically really, really good. Now they do class this pattern as, oh, where is that? Intermediate. So definitely not for a beginner unless you are an absolute fearless beginner. So I don't know if that's the reason why some of the instructions weren't as, well, not as complete. That's not really, they were complete, but some of the terms confused me. It was my very first lined coat. So in three areas, I really, really scratched my head. 
and I had to Google some of these steps. I couldn't find a sew along for the Chilton trench coat, so I had to rely on other videos that looked similar. Um, some of them weren't quite exactly the same. In the end, I got there, but three places where I was like, what? <laughs> so attaching the lining to the main coat, um, they have you attach it from the neck all the way down the front. Um, so I was wondering, I'm like, oh, what do I do with the collar? So I realized in the end that the collar needs to be basically out of the way and tucked in. Um, but I realized that after finding a video of another coat getting lined. The second thing that had me really scratching my head is attaching the lining to the main fabric at the sleeves. The, the pictures were clear and the instructions were clear. I just could not wrap my head around it. So I needed to find a video. I needed to see, I needed to see it in motion. Like sometimes you just need to see the thing happening to really understand it. So that was the second place that really got me confused and ended up being really, really simple, but I just needed to see it. And then finishing on the vent um, also had me scratching my head a little bit. In the end, I got there. It's not perfect, but it's done and it looks really, really good. So the instructions were good, but you definitely need to be um, an intermediate if you don't want to have to be Googling several of the steps. In terms of construction, like I said, it, this is rated an intermediate, but I, I wouldn't say it was a difficult sew. Like if you take the steps one at a time, go slow, take your time, read the instructions, Google the instructions that don't make sense to you. It's not difficult, <clears throat> not easy, but not super difficult if you go slow. Um, you do need to be precise and you, that's why, like I went super slow when I put this together because like around the collar, you need to be really, really precise. All of the top stitching, oh my goodness, so much top, top stitching. I used two spools, two small pool, spools of navy thread uh, to make my coat. So a lot of top stitching. All right, so let's talk about the version I made. So I have it here. I've worn it a couple times already. It is fabulous. So I made the size 18 EF graded to a 20 at the waist and hip, which is basically my usual size in cashmere. I made a muslin before I sewed my final version and I cut the muslin at a 20 EF and then so basically 20 all the way down and the muslin was fairly big like way too big in the upper bust area around the shoulders the upper back there was a lot of extra fabric there that I wasn't crazy about so I decided to just stick to my usual size, um, check the finished garment measurements, and there's definitely enough ease built into this pattern that you don't need to size up. Just go with um, your either your usual cashmere measurements, use the cashmere size calculator to get you started. But you know, as always, just make a muslin. Um, you get to also practice on your muslin some of the trickier parts so always a good idea so after making my muslin i cut my final fabric what i used for mine is a twill um fabric i got at a fabric club here in montreal and the lining is a kasha lining so the right side is like a satiny slippery fabric but the back side is a flannel, sort of. So this thing is so warm. It's been amazing because it did get pretty cool, like around freezing um, in the last couple of weeks. And I was nice and toasty in this. So yeah, so size 18 EF graded to a 20. 
um, at the waist. I did everything per the instructions. So here you have a little flap here. I mean, when I say it's not perfect, you can see my buttonhole, you know, interrupted the top stitching here. But, you know, I have the collar here. Um, I did forget to put a label. You know, why don't patterns remind us when, you know, it's time to put your label in now? Because I always forget. And by the time I remember, it's too late. I mean, I could hand sew one in, but who wants to do that? So, yeah. Um, buttons are these cute little, um, it's not silver. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what it is. But, um, yeah. The back has the cape with another button, buttonhole. It's got the belt with the belt loops. Um, the bottom of the sleeves has a really cool tie. Oh my gosh, this is full of bare fluffs. With, again, the buttonhole and buttons. And you can see that my lining is peaking a little bit, which is annoying. So, yeah, there, I mean, they tell you there's a there's a thing they tell you to do in the instructions to tack down the lining to the seam allowance inside. And I just didn't understand why. That's another pet peeve of mine. I mean, the cashmerette pattern did say tack it down if you don't want it to fall out. But I'm like, why would it fall out? It's not as long as the anyways, I should have listened and I didn't. So my lining on the sleeve tends to fall out a little bit. Not a big deal. I can just push it back in. Um, yeah, my collar. Then at the bottom, hopefully I'll be able to show you the vent. Ah, there it is. So here's my vent. Finished off very nicely, if I do say so myself. So yeah, I mean, this is my Chilton. Oh, um... Just up close so you can see all of the, like, double rows of top stitching everywhere along the princess seams, um, along the edges. Like, there's so much top stitching. It's unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, so this is my version. And hopefully, um, I mean, I took a video of me in it and I took a few pictures, so I'm going to pop those in so you can see it on me. Um, but all in all, I'm really, really happy with my new coat. Um, I do have a few tips. So if you are feeling adventurous and you want to get a, give this a try, um, definitely go slow. Look at the instructions or read the instructions for this section. That's one thing about cashmerette patterns. I love that they do their instructions in sections. So they're going to say, for example, um, sleeves. And then they go through everything that you need to do to construct your sleeves and then attaching them. And then they move to the next one. So, you know, attaching lining. And then you go through all of that. So read the instructions for each section before you get started that way there are no surprises and yeah take your time one step at a time prep all of your pieces so cut all of your main fabric cut all of your lining and prepare your um, interfacing and then try to keep the pieces with the pattern attached to it because there are a lot of pieces to this pattern and a lot of them look similar so I would highly recommend that you keep your pattern pieces pinned to your fabric and lining until the the, the last minute basically until you're ready to use that piece it just avoids you looking for things so I had a neat pile with all of my main fabric pieces. I had a pile with all of my lining and every piece had the pattern piece attached to it. That's the other thing. The cashmere pattern has um, a PDF file for printing 
the main coat and then there's a PDF file for printing the lining. So uh, if you're gonna get it printed at a printer or if you're get, getting the paper uh, copy, there's no, you know, use this piece, like cut this in outer and lining. No, 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 you get a pattern piece for your lining and a pattern piece for the main fabric, which I thought was really, really good. Um, what else? Oh, the top stitching in the front where the pockets are was particularly difficult to do. So when you're getting ready to top stitch the seam here where your pocket is, the pocket flap, oh, you can't really see this. The pocket flap here is in your way when you're trying to top stitch. So unless I was very confused or I did it wrong, I don't know what I did, but I basically had to stop with my needle down, change my foot to a zipper foot, just so I could get as close as possible to the pocket without obviously going into, like without sewing the flap. So just to get really, really close in my top stitching, I basically used a zipper foot for this part. And then I took the zipper foot off, put my regular foot back on again, and then just continued on down. And I, this, I did this um, for both sides. Now I tried with my regular foot. It got so wobbly. I had to like um, rip all of the stitches out. It didn't look good at all. So yeah, so if, yeah, I recommend using a zipper foot because you really need to get close to the, the pocket flap when you're top stitching. All right, well, um, I think that's it. All in all, I have to say I loved making this. Um, it challenged me. It taught me a ton and um, it was just fun to be able to sit there and really focus on what I was doing take my time go slow step by step it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be I thought I would hate it to be honest but you know um, I want to learn and I want to get better so I, I really thought this would be an uncomfortable sew for me, a very challenging sew, and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're in the mood to tackle something a little more um, complex, um, a little more challenging, then I highly recommend. It is an awesome pattern and it fits beautifully. Now, I wanted to talk briefly about cost because, um, you know, we don't sew, well, a lot of us don't sew necessarily to save money because fabric is not inexpensive, the equipment is not inexpensive, and our time is also worth money. But I was really curious um, to see if with something like a coat, we could end up saving money. Now, the pattern itself cost $20. The fabric and lining cost me $150. And then I used two spools of thread for about seven bucks, so something like that. So 177, call it $180 for a one-of-a-kind trench coat that fits me close to perfectly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I could have bought a trench coat in a store probably for less than $180, but would it be, like, would it look like this? Would it have the quality fabric? Um, all of the attention to detail that this pattern has, I don't know. Uh, one thing I do know is that there's no way in a ready-to-wear trench coat 
would fit me across the bust the way this thing does. So for me, not having to buy a larger size to accommodate the chest, and then I feel like I'm swimming in it in the shoulders, is worth all the money in the world. So yeah, $180, definitely not cheap, but not as, it definitely is not um, a whole lot more than a good quality trench coat would cost in a store. All right, so that'll do it for the Chilton pattern review. I would love to hear from you. Have you made the Chilton? Do you agree with my review of the pattern? Um, if you've not made it, have I na now tempted you <laughs> um, to give it a shot? And would love to know what you think of my trench. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please give the video a like on your way out if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.